Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ann Curtis from Museum Insider, and I'm delighted to welcome Laura Lott with us today for this session about the US museum market. Laura Lott has served as president and chief executive officer of the American Alliance of Museums since 2015, serving over 35,000 museums, museum professionals, and corporate partners. Today, she'll tell us about the challenges facing the US museum sector. After her session ends at 3.15 today, she will be joining me at my session, the next in this stream, where she will be able where she will be available to answer any questions that she couldn't get to at this session. If you haven't registered yet for the 315 session, I'll put a link to it in the chat in just a second. In the meantime, Laura, welcome. Thanks, Anne, and thanks everyone for being here. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you all today from across the pond in Washington, DC. Um, I thought, uh, I hope that you can see the, the slides that uploaded. I thought um, just a couple of visuals would, would be useful as we go through um, just a brief overview of the current state of the museum field here in the United States. Um, I thought I'd start just with uh, a little bit about the American Alliance of Museums. For those of you who may not be familiar, um, we are the um, uh, community of about 35,000 museum professionals and museums and um, companies that serve the museum profession uh, from across the country um, and some from outside of the US as well. And we say A to Z, art museums to zoos and everything in between and all different sizes of institutions as well. Um, our vision is a world informed and enriched by thriving museums. Um, and our mission is to champion museums and nurture excellence in museum practice uh, through our um, partnerships. And we are the chief um, sort of advocate for museums here in the United States, mostly at the federal level, but also with partners at the state and local levels as well, making the case for museums and museum funding um, and policy issues and, and funding decisions across the country. Uh, we also are the uh, accrediting body for museums here in the United States. Um, and have a, um, a whole program around helping museums to adopt best practices. Uh, we uh, also provide a, um, the largest actually, a gathering of museum professionals now in the world uh, each spring with our AAM annual meeting and museum expo, as well as a variety of other convenings uh, uh, in different parts of the world uh, in different parts of the country throughout the year. Our Center for the Future of Museums, um, now celebrating its 11th year, is uh, a, a, a great resource, I think, for uh, folks in and around the museum profession, taking a look at the social, economic, political, technological, financial, and other trends that um, are impacting museums and, and, and how museums can help create the future that they want, that they wish for themselves. Um, and of course, we have a robust professional uh, development program through um, well, mostly webinars these days, but uh, webinars and in-person workshops around the around the um, calendar. Um, so some of this is, I suspect, going to be very similar to what is happening in the UK and elsewhere in the world, given the the pandemic uh, and financial uh, fallout from. Uh, the, the pandemic we're all uh, dealing with. But a glance at some recent headlines here in the States tells the story. Um, nearly 100% of museums were shuttered in mid-March here in the States, um, and most remained closed through what was their um, supposed to be their busiest season, the summer season here. Um, and may, some of our major metropolitan areas here in Washington, DC and in New York, um, museums are just starting to reopen. Um, in California, they're actually, for the most part, still closed. Um, and in other major metropolitan areas throughout the country, um, they've opened at various times. Uh, some had to reclose after a virus spike here in, in July. Um, so they're going through this wave of opening and closing. Um, and uh, it's been a, a tough six or now going on seven months uh, for, the, for the field. Museums in the United States receive about 50% of their operating budget from earned sources, so ticket sales, um, rentals of their space, uh, cafe and shop sales, um, and programming, all of which went to zero really overnight back in March. 
Um, and at the height of the shutdown, we estimated that museums were losing about $33 million a day. And I think even though some museums have opened, reopened, um, it's at such small, both capacity as mandated by the their, their municipality, but also just um, folks are not rushing back. Most museums are operating about 15 to 25% of their normal capacity. And so still losing an incredible um, amount of their earned revenue. AAM uh, completed a survey. This is now a couple months old and, and a lot, you know, has been changing very quickly with this. So we're hoping to update this data in the next month. But as of June, um, uh, a survey confirmed our worst fears that one out of three museums here in the States might face permanent closure. Um, that's over 10,000 museums here in the US. Um, and unfortunately, the survey data showed that it really is all types and sizes um, with a slightly bigger impact on those really interactive museums um, and those that rely a lot on uh, uh, on uh, ticket sales, the so children's museums and science centers in particular. Outdoor spaces were slightly less impacted, um, and um, but 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 you know across small, medium, and large size museums, they're all facing um, significant challenges and significant risk of um, uh, of closing permanently or just not knowing how how they will get through uh, an extended financial crisis. About 56% of museums reported that they had furloughed or laid off staff, um, and some of them made really deep cuts. So a third of museums laid off more than half of their staffs. Um, most are anticipating reopening with significantly smaller staffs. Um, that's um, you know a good news, bad news story, I suppose. Um, lots of opportunity, I think, for expertise to provide some outsourced um, services. Um, most were, uh, uh, a third of museums expect to lose more than half of their operating income for the year. Um, and many expect 2021 to be worse. Um, international tourism here in the States is not predicted to come back for several years um, unless uh, we expect there'll be less financial relief, both from government and, and other nonprofit sources. Um, most museums, unfortunately, were not prepared um, for this kind of uh, deep and lengthy uh, impact. Um, a 2017 survey showed that one third of museums were operating in the red, dipping into their reserves or their endowment for operating expenses. And as of um, June, 31% had zero reserves left. Um, so this is where that, that highest risk chunk comes from. The second pandemic we're struggling with here in the United States is one of racism. Um, museums are struggling with their own racist and colonialist histories, um, and their 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 racist and colonial presence, I'm afraid, as well, um, as well as how they can be part of a solution for society. Um, there are changing expectations of museums among our audiences. Um, around how museums participate in social justice issues. Um, and our upcoming November election will continue to be divisive um, and leave museums in a place where, as some of the most trusted institutions in our country, they'll be charged with creating safe spaces um, and making greater efforts to be equitable institutions, promoting voter registration and turnout, um, and acting as organizations that can help fight um, misinformation. Um, museum leaders are facing an incredibly uncertain future and a radically changed environment. Uh, opportunities for uh, companies that can provide consultation based on comparable experiences, um, such as what the UK has done so far since um, we feel here in the States that the UK and most of the world um, is actually ahead of us in terms of handling the, the pandemic and also in some of the um, you know, racism and colonialism issues that we all um, uh, endure, struggle with. Um, so, you know, there's just a couple of, of, of things here, and I know Anne is going to touch more upon this in her presentation next, but obviously museums are implementing new health and safety measures 
um, many who were really engaged in creating um, interactive and, and, and tactile experiences are now looking at creating um, more digital experiences and, and touchless experiences, but that are still really engaging for visitors. Um, and of course, online um, experiences as well, and specifically how to monetize um, the digital experiences that museums leapt into providing back in March and have continued to throughout you know, um, even prior to the pandemic. Uh, but figuring out the new business models is, is something that's top of mind to every almost every director um, that I speak to. Um, and of course, some major building projects continue uh, and some museums are taking advantage of these lengthy closures to actually refresh their space and refresh some exhibits. The um, AAM corporate partners that we serve are actively using many of our platforms to connect and share resources and experiences with museums um, and museum professionals. Um, many of our corporate partners are monitoring these concerns and identifying the common needs um, and engaging museums through trusted platforms like the AAM Annual Meeting and Museum Expo, our um, uh, museum marketplace, uh, and things like Museum Junction, which is a free community board um, that folks uh, ask and share resource, ask questions and share resources with each other on. I put a link here to, um, we have a, a, a robust section of our website now that is resources and information around dealing with um, COVID-19 um, and related you know, issues, uh, financial and otherwise, for the museum field. And there's a specific section for companies that serve museums there, um, as well as some information on um, how to engage with uh, US museums through um, the many resources that AAM has. And Museum Marketplace is one that you may be familiar with. I know we do have some um, UK and other international uh, vendors that are, are have, have listed themselves here um, we are offering a, a free resource um, for companies that are providing specific um, COVID-19 uh, guidance for museums. Well, some, some cases that's webinars and other education, you know, professional development sessions for museums or um, pro bono services or other things that um, we know the spectacular um, corporate community has been um, working on to support the museum field. Um, and the link to Museum Marketplace is here on the slide too. It's just museummarketplace.com. So with that, um, I will uh, be glad to take a question or two now. And then as Anne said, um, I am uh, looking forward to leaping over to her session. Hope you will join us um, and we'll take some questions together at the end of that. Okay, Laura, I'm gonna get ready for my next one. So I'll leave you here to answer some questions, okay? Great. Thank you, Anne.